thanks for joining me for my weekly sim racing adventures. This is round one at Zolder. It's a multi-sprint race and it's a multi-class series as well. So the GT3 cars ahead are just a bit faster, have a little bit more downforce compared to the GT4 cars behind here, which is the class that I'm in. This is split two of two, so the slower of the two splits in our league. This is a league run by CMS Racing. This is actually the first full season we've done of multi-class racing, first round, first season. And you'll see that there's a little bit of confusion here about the start procedures. I qualified second in that bright pink car on the in, on the outside, sorry. And on the inside is R. Flanagan in the white Aston Martin, qualified first. And he seems to be a little bit confused about the start procedure, which was supposed to be that the GT4 class behind waits until they all get to the start finish line to start racing. And you can see here that they just sort of take off on accident. Ended up waiting about halfway down the straight, lifted off the throttle to allow us to all catch up. No harm, no foul. Here's what it looked like from my perspective. And you can see I'm a little confused on what I should be doing. And eventually just decide to follow them out there. And the idea behind that waiting is to just give a little bit more space between the back of the GT3 field and the front of the GT4 field. You'll see in uh, just a little bit of time here, not that much time at all, that the GT3 field, as they make their mistakes and fall back, which drivers tend to do, to be fair, they uh, they fall right back into the leaders of the GT4 field and becomes a little bit difficult to navigate. So we got V.Lima here as we jump ahead to their view to see what happens. Just losing the rear end on lap one with cold tires and R. Flanagan actually getting alongside, making a pass which is a little bit awkward. The GT3 car will want to get past R. Flanagan here as quickly as possible. And coming up to the chicane here, this is a really tough track to pass on, even for the multi-class uh, GT3 cars here. With the extra horsepower, it doesn't really help them so much, and you see V. Lima not giving R. Flanagan any space at all. R. Flanagan having to run wide, and I'm catching right up to the back. We jump ahead to car number 420 here, and the car just ahead the blue one is going to go just a tad wide and spin out right in front of car 420 that's unfortunate for them and they're going to spin themselves out on the grass so easy to do and just so frustrating here to watch the whole field drive on by we jump back up to uh to me we'll see what this looks like from my perspective we move back in time actually um right on the bumper of r dot flanagan here And you'll see just to the right here, cars facing the wrong way. Really just complete and utter chaos on lap one. Move back a few cars to my dad here, who's in qualified third, currently running in fourth. And as we move around to the end of lap one, we will actually see the entire GT4 field, all nine cars on the straightaway in frame at once. So very bunched up, very close racing, which is a really fun aspect of this of this series. And just to recap the race strategy a little bit here, it's a 75 minute race, two pit stops required, fuel only is required, tires are optional. So the fastest strategy I determined was to take full fuel from the start, make the tires last the whole way, and to minimize the amount of time lost in the pit stop. So what that means here in the first stint is that as long as I can just keep R. Flanagan in sight, as long as they're going for a different strategy that requires a little bit more time spent in the pit stops, I'll be able to close that gap up under the uh, first and second pit stops. Now the downside of course is that in this first stint, because I'm carrying more fuel, my pace will be a little bit slower. We see car 420 there recovering from their lap one accident, working their way through the GT4 field. And R. Flanagan indeed is opening up the gap to about four seconds. Uh, seems to be maybe carrying less fuel, also qualified on pole, maybe just a little bit faster at this track. And what I'm looking for now is to pit when the GT3 leader is about 20 seconds behind me. And what that will allow me to do is to let that GT3 field go past me while I'm sitting in the pits as opposed to losing time on track. And you can see here attacking the pit lane, braking as late as I can, which is actually later than the normal braking point for that turn, getting down to the 50 kilometer per hour speed limit here. And again, the goal 
is just to take the one liter of fuel, so I'm going to minimize the amount of time spent in the pits. You can see the pretty cool pit crew animation there, taking on the one liter of fuel, working my way back out, and the hope here is that most of the GT3 field has just passed me while I was spending all this time in the pits, and that I will have some clear track both ahead and behind where I can put in some clean laps that are not affected by letting the GT3 field have to come around and lap me. I'm checking my mirrors here to, just to make sure there's nobody behind me. It's a bit of a stressful time exiting the pits. The field of vision is not very good on my setup, and in sim racing in general, the, the spatial awareness can be a really tough thing to imitate. You see C.Pace, the GT3 car ahead, jumping just in front of me after they get through under braking, that can be a really challenging thing to do. They want to get back on the racing line, but uh, sometimes they'll brake just a little bit earlier than you, actually, and end up closing that gap really quick. We'll fast forward here. I end up do getting quite a few clean laps. I do believe the GT3 leaders are indeed much ahead of me now. Uh, we'll be working the way around again to lap me twice. And just the GT3 back markers who were either in the pits just now or had lap one incidents are coming around to pass me. We see a dot Duarte working their way in the BMW. Um, pretty far back as we can see in the mirror here, um, but always ready for them to go for it. Looks like they may actually, I try to give them space and get a hard hit on the inside. You can see they end up in the grass as well. We'll jump back in space and time, which of course requires us to use our, our TARDIS here, and just see what it looks like from their perspective. We can see their steering wheel and everything. And the space opens up. They appear to lift, hesitating a little bit, and lift off the brake, not sort of understanding uh, where they thought I was going to go there. Maybe if we see the outside cam, we'll see something different. Now, there is a cone. Yeah, yeah, I think I see it now as we move back one more time to my perspective. There's a cone on that second apex, and I was about to, to hit it as I give lots of space on the inside, and thankfully, A. Duarte gave me a nice nudge and allowed me to avoid touching that cone at all. Um, all it took was a, a hearty nudge on the inside there, so thank you for that very much. And moving back, no time to relax as there's one, two, three more GT3 cars that will no doubt be anxious to get by. One of them takes the inside, coming into the last chicane. I create a bit of a parking lot there in that turn. This is E. Chan, who's been uh, known to struggle with consistency here, picking up a little bit of slipstream off of me. That's a, that's a nice move there. And we see four cars actually go through in the span of just about two or three turns. And you can see ahead that the Mercedes having a bit of a spin. I'm not sure if there was any contact there. We'll jump back in time again. Let's see what it looks like from their perspective. E. Chan behind, no doubt anxious to get by, no time to waste. And did they spin? Nope, they actually they got a nice solid uh, touch from E. Chan there. That's an unfortunate incident. E. Chan drives off into the sunset. Uh, no need to wait for your competitors when you tap them off the track. And we'll check the leaderboard here. As we fast forward, you'll notice I do have some clear track ahead of me, which is great for my strategy. And it appears as though I'm fallen way far behind. And actually, I've, I think what's happened is I've just pitted a bit earlier than everybody else in the field. So hopefully what will happen over the next few laps is as they come into the pits, I will leapfrog ahead of them, not having to actually pass them on track, which will be nice. Flanagan, you can see, definitely hasn't pitted, still way far ahead of me. And hopefully what's happening is perhaps they're having to struggle with working through GT3 traffic or maybe battling with another GT4 car and me with clear track much further behind, I'm actually gaining a little bit of time just by having nobody to deal with around me, which is actually really nice. M. Sutherland, my dad there, getting a stop and go for 30 seconds. Not sure what that is for. We'll have to check in on that. 
as we continue to fast forward, we want to jump back here in a second to the GT3 leader uh, just to see exactly how the GT3 cars are supposed to be passing the GT4s. You see all these blue flags waving, and those are mostly just informative. The GT4 cars are not really meant to be altering from their race line or slowing down or weaving out of the way or anything like that. Uh, in order for the GT3 cars to know a, uh, a safe place to pass, they need to know exactly what we're going to be doing. And so you'll see here as S. Newell, the GT3 leader, uh, approaches. This is a really difficult and tight section. There's really only one racing line through it without compromising both cars heavily. Uh, kind of a left, right, left section sort of thing, except maybe in reverse. And very patient on the throttle. You can see this is normally a full throttle turn, but S. Newell is just hovering over the throttle, um, being very, very patient, waiting until they're on the straightaway, and then very, very cleanly and easily by under braking there. We'll move back to my perspective. I think R. Bowman and the Lamborghini Huracan is going to come by as well. And we'll fast forward again through some more clean laps. I believe we'll see our friend Car 420 come through. And something other, uh, another interesting thing that happens during these multi-class races, especially the ones with with pit stops required is some cars you will encounter multiple times like you'll see here car 420 and then a yellow car uh, we'll see dot lamb will work their way through here at, leading up to turn one and you'll notice that i will encounter them multiple times throughout the race just depending on their strategy compared to mine and pace differences other cars like the front end of the gt3 field i will only encounter once or or maybe uh or none depending on, on how, how the pit stop strategies work out. And speaking of which, Ardot Flanagan coming out of his first pit stop here. We'll see how things stack up. This is where we get to see who has gained and who has lost over the last few laps that we've been separated. There I go. We got N. Chan, I believe, coming up behind. N. Chan, again, another driver who's very, very inconsistent, uh, almost losing it there in turn one. Wants to go three wide with us, I think better of it, and back out uh, just in case. Let let them go by, and you can see here a uh, gap opens up just a little bit. C. Pace, again, another one of those drivers that I'll be seeing a lot of. Um, I'm catching up to R. Flanagan here, wondering if C. Pace is going. Yep, they pull right in front of me under braking. Again, they appear to be doing that a lot during that turn. And we have another GT3 car coming through here at the exit of the chicane. And when you get a line of these cars here, it's really just is one after the next. Really no time to breathe. You always feel like you're taking a compromised line. We've got G. Lira here, fast approaching in what I believe is the skyline. Late lunge into the hairpin. I hang it wide just a little bit longer than normal. Take a late apex to try to pick up some speed on the way out to make up for it. We'll fast forward through another few laps here. Get some relatively clear track for the upcoming laps ahead. Again, really important to the strategy that I can preserve my tires and maintain this pace for the full 75 minutes and not let my tire degradation affect my pace too much. We'll see a couple more. Two, almost two. Here it come again, I think. Yeah, two GT3 cars coming through. This one uh, appears to be struggling for consistency as well. I come right up along the back of... R. Flanagan, and you'll see this gap just increase and decrease as we each have to navigate through the GT3 field. And a quick check of the leaderboard shows that we are back near the front of the GT4 field as they have each now taken their first pits. We'll rejoin here about halfway through the race. Got another GT3 car clumsily working their way through, running wide on the exit. We end up side by side, which is always a little bit awkward. Fast forward just for a second here and then stop as we notice a little side-by-side -side action up ahead between R. Flanagan and the Lexus that just worked their way past me. And Alexis not really giving R. Flanagan enough space. Perhaps uh, thought that R. Flanagan would back out before that second apex, but doesn't. Either way, is forced to cut the second apex. It slows them down quite a bit. 
And I'm definitely happy to take advantage of that. Unfortunate circumstances for Ardout Flanagan. But all of these little mistakes end up compounding and put me uh, at greater likelihood of coming out of the second pit stop still ahead of Ardout Flanagan. And again, even though I'm really close here, not looking to make a pass, definitely not trying to force anything, really just trying to stay within striking distance in case of a mistake, and again, preserve my tires as much as possible. And as we look at the leaderboard here, at, toward the end of the lap, you'll notice that we are back in first and second place. The whole GT4 field has now pitted, it looks like. And we jump ahead here, we see we're approaching my dad, I, who I think is on a different pit strategy. Coming through turn one there, looking nice. And then the GT4 leaders here are Dot Flanagan, followed by myself in the bright pink livery. And it seemed as though through most of the race, I was a little bit better through turns one, two, and three here. You see that I'm closing up nicely and along this back straightaway as well. Our Dot Flanagan seemed to struggle with this turn here, which is a really bad place to be struggling as you see it leads onto a long straightaway so I'm able to pull out to the side here as I see a mistake make a clean pass as Ardoff Flanagan ducks back behind me and I'm not going to defend or anything here again if, if they want to work their way past I will let them have first place I, I believe I have the pace to basically just shadow them for the rest of the race at this point and make the pass in the pits We'll move back a couple cars, back to A. Duarte, uh, who, as you remember earlier, saved me from hitting that cone, uh, which was uh, very, very nice. We'll see if he can uh, do me a favor here. Moves to the inside and actually hasn't had to take evasive action. Slower GT4 car ahead. We see what happens though they go wide into the grass, getting a little bit crazy. R. Flang and I picking different sides, avoiding contact. That's what it looks like from my perspective. Not sure which side to pick until the very last second, almost changing my mind again. It was very close indeed. Adot Dorte slipping by Ardot Flanagan on his back straightaway here. Uh, being a lot more patient this time, you see tapping the brakes actually, making sure they don't rear end. And thinking about going for it, does back out and gives me the space. Actually slows down Ardot Flanagan quite a bit, which is great for me. And coming up into turn one here, I am expecting a move. I lift early, I believe, just to let them work their way through without affecting my race at all. And fast forward again, we'll see Ardot Flanagan clearly faster in the second half of this lap here, poking their nose in once, twice here. And then once we get back to the start of the lap, I'm able to open up the gap just a little bit more to avoid uh, to avoid a late lunge, perhaps, into this hairpin just barely. I do make a mistake, miss the apex, go wide, which allows Ardot Flanagan through. Not a problem, willing to hang out again behind. And again, we see my dad just up ahead on a different uh, different strategy. Race pace looking great. We don't seem to be gaining on him too much. And we'll jump back just a few cars here to look at who's approaching us in this field. It looks like we've got at least two GT3 cars battling for third place, so they are not going to want to lose any time at all as they make their way past the GT4 cars ahead. The Audi getting very, very loose here in these turns. And they do successfully make it past me. Ardot Flanagan appears to be struggling a little bit. We have T. Duarte behind. And approaching the first chicane here, there'll be a second chicane. I move over to the racing line to let T. Duarte through. There are a lot of cars. We'll move ahead to a, a shot. And if it, if it looks like there are too many cars to be going into an even tighter chicane than we just went through, I think you might be right. As they go three wide, and that was just never going to work there. You see contact is made. Uh, my dad gets collected there, able to uh, stay out of hitting the wall. But from his perspective, here's what it looks like. Two, three GT3 cars <laughs> trying to make the pass. And unfortunately, that Lexus is supposed to lock their brakes there. 
uh, to be a little bit more predictable, maybe avoiding that contact with my dad, but either way, a mess indeed. Luckily for us, the two GT4 leaders were able to just barely squeak through unscathed. A. Duarte up ahead, uh, no doubt was involved in that uh, mayhem. And again, the GT3 car is not much faster through the apex as I'm almost rear-ending A. Duarte there as the Lexus comes through. Uh, cleanly through me, misjudges their breaking point just a bit and has to take evasive action. Uh, I unfortunately also miss my breaking point and give them a little nudge as well. And as I move back to the racing line, we see an impatient GT3 car, that's R. Bowman, I believe, uh, taking the racing line from me. And more chaos into turn one as multiple cars getting loose through the apex. And again, Ardot Flanagan and I find ourselves just a tenth of a second or two separated after all of those cars work their way past on that lap. And again, very, very close here through the first three turns. I do appear to be hanging on the Porsche there in the GT3 class. Uh, impatiently works their way around me, gives a nudge to Flanagan, takes evasive action. I again take advantage of the unfortunate circumstances and build a little bit of a gap, actually. We fast forward here as we see me able to uh, just barely hold off R. Flanagan through the second half of the lap and let some GT3 cars through. Again, there's the yellow C. Lamb car, who we will no doubt see more of in the future. We're about two-thirds of the way through the race now, and I'm checking the track map again to see how much traffic is approaching from behind and where I might be exiting the pits after my next uh, pit stop. So I'm really trying to time my second pit stop to avoid any potential time losses that would otherwise occur, such as having to let the GT3 leaders uh, through again to lap me for the second or third time. And I'm actually extending the gap just a little bit as we see from Ardot Flanagan's perspective here. Uh, the gap increasing over the last few laps. And we'll move back ahead uh, on board with me looking backward as C. Pace finds their way past. And V. Lima next in line in the black Audi behind. Uh, a known suspect having issues this race, uh, keeping the car on the asphalt and again going just a little bit wide, it doesn't take much, spinning just in front of Ardot Flanagan who is able to avoid contact. And we'll fast forward here to see a GT4 car uh, coming out of the pits after their second stop, so not really battling with them, just trying not to be held up too much if, they, uh, if their pace is too far off of Mars. And instead, I actually make a mistake into that chicane, uh, opening up the gap, and uh, C. Lamb again comes through spinning in front as we narrowly avoid contact, and once more they come through as we enter turn one. And checking the leaderboard now, we're currently in first with one pit stop to go. Ardot Flanagan just a second or two behind, so a very close race indeed. More GT3 chaos there. And I decide I've had enough of this craziness, and I go back into the pits, hoping to come out in clear track. Again, you see me here attacking the pit lane hard, almost rear-ending another GT4 car, and unfortunately I do get stuck behind someone who is less familiar uh, with the pit entry, and do lose a few seconds there. Uh, could have been worse. Um, wasn't sure if I was allowed to pass at the pit entry, definitely didn't want to make any contact or anything like that. And to be fair, the pit entry is really unclear as to where the actual uh, 50 kilometer per hour speed limit sign is, so um, it definitely can be confusing and stressful. And again, taking just one liter of fuel, aka the splash and dash strategy, exiting the pit lane, looking behind to see if anybody's coming out. It appears as though I have a little bit of clear track. ADOT Duarte coming up behind once again in the BMW. And as the camera switches to uh, look behind us, we can see that we have a 
bit of a gap. R. Flanagan, not sure if they came into the pits at the same time as me. They were uh, just a few seconds back, and it looks like as I come through after the first sector, we'll get an update on the time. I do have clear track, thank goodness. Uh, and it does look like Flanagan has come into the pits and has left about 14, 13 seconds behind, meaning uh, indeed it does appear as though Ardot Flanagan took fuel um, more than one liter, uh, meaning did have a pace advantage at the start of the race uh, because they were running on lower fuel. And there's that advantage I was talking about of 14 seconds spent in the pits uh, longer than me, meaning really all I have to do is cruise to the finish now, avoid um, avoid any contact if possible, keep it on the asphalt, and at this point, I know that the race is pretty much mine to lose. And the track is pretty clear ahead and behind, uh, not a lot to contend with or to break my focus. And we are going to skip ahead a few laps in space and time, coming up on about five minutes remaining. And as I come in toward the end of the lap, we uh, will jump back into the driver's seat and check, uh, check the mirrors. And I think what we'll notice is uh, more GT3s coming up here behind. And again, we're only about five minutes from the end of the race here. I have the lead by 15 seconds over Flanagan, who does not appear to be gaining. And I think I see a yellow car, and I check the uh, the Delta meter, and yeah, you can see it's going to be C. Lamb, followed closely by E. Chan, a couple of suspects here, rapidly approaching. I play it really conservative uh, coming into this next turn. I'm going to hang far left. I lift early to give them plenty of space and even still find myself touching the wall quickly try to get the car started looks like I have clear track to rejoin I can get going parallel C. Lamb with a very unsafe rejoin gets lucky to not collect those other two cars and here's what it looks like from their perspective you'll see Ida Chan very anxious to get by no patience at all and as we come into turn three, you'll actually notice Edot Chan gives quite a bit of space. Could have used me kind of as a, a screen or a pick there. The space is there and just continues left, takes out all three of us. And I rejoin with Ardot Flan approaching quickly from behind, who can now just see me ahead. And he's probably wondering what just happened after five or six laps of a 13 to 15 second gap. It looks like R. Dot Flanagan is looking closer to three seconds or so, 2.8 seconds. And we'll fast forward through the last few laps here where thankfully I had the pace on the old tires to keep R. Dot Flanagan behind and uh, successfully bring home a win in the beautiful pink K person. And you can see checkered flags are out. Thanks for joining. I'll see you on the next one.